fact, it creates a trouble when it's angry. How does Aditya L1 helps us through the mission? Thank you and good morning viewers. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that uh, Aditya L1 is a multi-wavelength, multi-instrument and multi-directional mission. Multi-wavelength because it works in X-rays, UV and visible. Multi-instrument because there are seven experiments on board. And multi-directional because it looks not only in the sun direction but also around it. Now when we, the sun becomes angry, there are two types of process which happens. One is solar flares, that means electromagnetic radiation, which reaches the earth in eight minutes. But along with that, there is a mass which is also ejected out in form of plasma. And that can take about two to four days to reach the earth. What we are looking for from the Aditya Alvan mission is to see the impact of solar flares as well as coronal mass ejections as they come to the earth. We have instruments which look at not only in the sun direction, but also in other directions, for example, perpendicular to ecliptic or in the earth directions. The impact is that we need to see when the sun becomes quite angry, what are the ways in which it is affecting the planet earth and L1 point being at point L1, which is just 1% away from the earth, it is able to provide us a lot of new informations of the plasma and the electromagnetic radiations which is reaching the planet Earth. Um, thank you so much, sir. So now we'll move on to Dr. Annapurni Subramaniam. So the science behind this mission is very unique. So what's the impact of this on the Earth and also on the heliosphere? Yeah, so thank you for having me on this show. Um, to put the thing in context, uh, I am the director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics and we have delivered the, the, one of the major payloads on this mission. This is the visible emission line chronograph. So if you actually look at the words used in it, it is visible because it is using, seeing the sun in the visible wavelength. Emission line, so what is it detecting? It is the emission line of certain elements because the corona is hot the emission which you get is in the terms of uh, it's not absorbing the light which is coming from the uh, uh, sun, but it's already hot, so it is coming down by emitting lines. So we are tracking these lines using what? A coronagraph. Now, what is a coronagraph? This instrument makes a total solar eclipse all the time within the instrument. So you are looking at the sun all the time, 24-7, through using this mission, and this instrument looks at the sun as though it is always in total solar eclipse. Now, why you want to have the eclipse all the time? Because you want to see the corona. Why corona? Because when sun burps, when sun is angry, the corona is what it takes the matter away. Now, what is unique about this instrument? This is going to see the corona as close as possible from the disk of the sun. Now, what is so challenging about it? It is because the sun's corona is a million times fainter than the disk of the sun. So you have to not see the disk of the sun, but see only the corona. So this instrument is very difficult to make, challenging, but it is made, now it's going to the orbit. Now what we plan to study using this instrument is the corona, its dynamics. Through this emission line, you can actually measure the velocity by a simple physics called Doppler effect. So you can measure the velocity, you can measure how much matter is moving, and eventually how that matter will come to the Earth and the helios heliosphere. So it's overall this instrument, along with the others, of course, the other PI will also be explaining about it. So these holistically will give you a lot of information regarding not only the sun, but also the heliosphere. Thank you. That was very interesting, Doctor. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to Durgesh Tripathi, Dr. Durgesh Tripathi. You are the PI of the pay suit lo uh, for the payload suit. How is that different from other telescopes like Hubble or James Webb? And what are you going to investigate using this? Yeah, so good afternoon. My voice is going to mumble by, uh, because I'm still in the awe of the, of the launch and one of the payload is gone there. So um, essentially, uh, JWST, which is James Webb Telescope and the Hubble Telescope, they are going to look at the universe, different objects, galaxies, star formation, and, and other objects you see in the universe. Whereas uh, when we talk about it, uh, L1, it is going to look at one particular object, which is our sun. Um, and it's also uh, kept on the other side of the Sun-Earth line at the L1 point, whereas the James Webb Telescope went on the other side of the Earth, which is uh, at the L2 point. Now, uh, the scientific difference, of course, they, they also observe in ultraviolet, but uh, um, uh, Aditya, as a 
Professor Anil Bharadwaj and also Professor Anna Purni Subhman alluded to. These are multi-wavelength uh, 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 satellite and they will be observing all across the, um, the electromagnetic spectrum. In particular, SUIT is going to be looking at the ultraviolet radiation uh, in 2000 to 4000 angstrom, if that matters to you, uh, um, uh, emits from the lower and the middle atmosphere of the sun. And what we want to look at that how in general the sun's atmosphere is coupled by looking at the observations at various height and uh, how actually this radiation is coming and uh, getting absorbed in the uh, Earth's atmosphere and what kind of effect it can have in the chemistry of ozone and oxygen, for example, and also these explosions which are happening, how much radiation they are creating, and how much effect it would might have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, now we move on to Sh Dr. Satish Thampi. You are connected with the payload PAPA. Already the plasma particles on the moon are analyzed. How do you analyze plasma particles in the sun? And what is the imp importance of solar winds, and how does it impact? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving uh, opportunity to, to come into this room. Uh, as my colleagues, they mentioned actually about the sun. Today we have the auspicious day where actually we are going to our own star, that is the sun. Just I want to tell to the viewers that actually the sun, which is our hero basically in the solar system, if you look into the mass of the solar system, 99% of the mass of the solar system is occupied by sun. And also this sun is plasma. Now, when we are talking about the heliosphere, actually, with this, all our planets are engulfed in that thing. You know, we have been studying in decades, maybe in centuries, we have been studying about the sun. But what we were lacking, actually, a comprehensive approach, because sun is giving its energy mainly in three forms. The first one is the radiation, actually, my colleagues already talked about, which we can do remotely from our ground. But the plasma, basically, we are talking about the solar wind, what, what we call the space plasma, as well as the magnetic field. This can be only studied by in-situ. If we study all this radiation, particles, and field, then only we'll get a full comprehensive understanding of the sun. Now, we are, we are getting the first space based observatory from the Indian soil, and we are making this opportunity. And of course, I am thankful to ISRO and all my colleagues and my teammates from VSSC and all my scientific colleagues here. This is the opportunity we got, actually, we are make, trying to make, understand, actually, all the three things, radiation, particles, and field. Already they mentioned about the radiation. Now, uh, Dr. Vivian will be talking about field. Just I want to emphasize on the particles. That's why we named it as PAPA. PAPA means plasma analyzer package for Aditya. This is developed by Space Physics Laboratory in support of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. And now this instrument has two components. If you look at the solar wind, basically it comprises of 95% of protons, then alpha particles roughly around 4 to 5%, then equal number of electrons also. So our PAPA is a comprehensive package measuring both ions and the electrons. Mm. Now, these electrons, like already our uh, colleagues, they mentioned actually the major transient events like coronal mass ejection. That's a huge mass which is coming out of sun. Basically, it's a plasma. Basically, when we are talking about solar and basically nothing but it's the extension of the corona only. That's the atmosphere of it. Now, these particles actually, they only actually modulate the energy and momentum of the planetary atmospheres. See, we, we, when the sun is quiet, like it, he is not aggressive, sun is what we are getting the ambient solar wind. So, if you look into that thing actually, that one actually gives uh, what, what, what we call the, about the, uh, the interactions, what we call the normal routine phenomenon which is happening on the earth. But when there is sun is angry, it gives like in a CME, CA or all these sort of events are happening, that is really going to affect our planets. That's what we call the space weather. Now our intention is to understand, that first of all actually what this effects, basically the solar wind, in the ambient condition as well as during this transition years, how this solar wind behaves, and also how this coronal mass ejections which is passing through different planets, how actually, what are the different things, like what we call about the microphysics, macrophysics, and the mesophysics of that things, that we want to understand. Mm -hmm. So one thing is actually, it's a physics subject to understand, because we are getting an ideal point, Lagrangian point, which is in the sun earth uh, plane, mm -hmm. and we will be seeing the events exactly there. Second thing is actually, we can definitely monitor the parameters, like what actually Papa will measure the electrons and ions, we will be getting energy, direction, and angular information, uh, sorry, uh, mass information. Mm. So if we know these things related to electrons, as, uh, electrons we don't want the mass, but for the ions we are getting the mass information. Okay. Coupling the, all this information actually what we can do is we can derive the plasma moments. Mm. That will be definitely going to the modeling part, actually dynamics part, and that will definitely going to tell about the effect of the space weather effects. Ah, yes. So in due course actually, with the yellow, in addition to other L5 missions, we will be able to tell, this is the importance of the plasma missions. Ah, yes. That actually, as, as you mentioned yes. actually earlier, with the lunar mission we achieved, we tried to understand mm that thing, really it changed, this plasma study changed the perspective of the moon. Now, I will give more detail about uh, yes. Thank you. 
thank you, sir. Th thank you so much for that, sir. And now we move on to Dr. Dipankar Banerjee. So, you, you manage the beautiful solar observatory at Nainital. How do you think the studies of heliophysics will supplement Aditya L1? Can, can you tell us something about the history of solar observatories in India? That's right. Uh, India has a long tradition of looking at the sun from the ground. In fact, uh, from Kodaikanal Observatory, we have been observing the sun for more than 100 years. And also, we have beautiful you know, solar observatory at Udaipur, in the lakeside, and at Nainital. We are looking at the sun. But there are limitations of looking at the sun from the ground because you can only see the lower atmosphere of the sun. So this was very, very important that we could go to the space. And this is a fantastic opportunity. Originally, more than 10 years back, we were only looking at a small satellite program. And then Professor Yuwa Rao suddenly came up with this idea, why are you, we taking baby steps? We should think big. We should go to much longer distance. And then this opportunity came in, the Lagrangian one mission, the entire country, all the scientific institution got very much highly motivated. There are multiple payloads were then proposed. So eventually now we have a Lagrangian one observatory class mission. And as you heard from my colleagues, that it is a multi-wavelength observatory. So that's very important to have the shorter wavelength coverage from the space. And in addition, the ground-based observations are also important. So a combination of the ground-based telescope and the space-based platform is very, very important. And since you asked about the question about the, you know, how Aditya in the overall heliophysics uh, research uh, uh, within the international scenario, we only have three uh, an spacecraft around Lagrangian one point, from primarily from NASA and ESA. So I think, again, this is a, a fantastic achievement from India if you could reach L1 uh, with the full observatory class mission, it will really open a new window altogether. So I think this is a great opportunity and we are all looking forward. And as I mentioned, probably we'll request that, you know, a better ground-based facility. We have already projected a National Large Solar Telescope project from the ground. I think this is now high time. We have a very nice uh, ground-based telescope also to complement the capabilities of Aditya L1. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Indeed, it's a very great opportunity. And uh, now we move on to Dr. V Vipin K. Yadav. So you're in charge of the magnetometer. What is the contribution of magnetometer to Aditya program? Uh, yeah, uh, you see the magnetic field measurements are very crucial uh, in, in space and especially at L1 point. Uh, what we are going to measure with magnetometer is uh, the interplanetary magnetic field that is coming all the way from sun and towards the earth. So uh, typically these values at L1 point are around 5 to 10 nanotesla. But these values increases whenever there is an extreme solar event, such as the coronal mass ejection or, say, a solar magnetic storms. Now, these uh, uh, events are crucial to monitor the sp near Earth space weather because these can have an effect on the life on Earth. Uh, if you remember Quebec, there was an event when the power lines were snapped a few years ago. That was because of an extreme solar uh, event. So to keep an eye on the surroundings of uh, Earth, we need these measurements. And apart from that, uh, for solar wind observations also, uh, these measurements will be uh, crucial. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So now we move on to Dr. Anuj Nandi. So uh, what is the importance of solar flares and the impact in heliospheres? And how does Aditya L1 contribute to all of this? Uh, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, as my colleagues already pointed out, the importance of this mission uh, and the instruments about. So the thing is, as you know, that solar Vehicle flares are the energetic and explosive energy release wall, in few seconds to minutes time scale, and it is order of 10 to 27 arcs to 10 to 32 arcs. Now the thing is, these solar flares, uh, why it is important? As because these solar flares actually tells the dynamics and activity in the sun. So the thing is, what there are two instruments, unique instruments built by URO Satellite Center that is going to cover the solar flares from 1 kV to extremely high energy, around 200 kV. And we know that visible sun is only 6,000 degree Kelvin temperature, whereas the outer surface of the sun is million degree Kelvin. So the thing is, why there is disparity? So I think these two instruments, along with the other two instruments, VLC and SUIT, we are going to address uh, the, this million dollar questions as well as why there is difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now I'd like to uh, go back to uh, Dr. Anil Bharatwaj. 
So uh, there are many satellites that are sent to other, uh, the, uh, the space by other nations. So what makes Aditya L1 different from these satellites? Well, that's a very good question because uh, first of all, let me again tell you that India will be the third or Israel will be the third space agency to have a mission at L1 point. And I just mentioned that it is multi-wavelength, multi-instrument and multi-direction and it measures particle, field, and radiations. So you don't have such kind of satellites existing at L1 point so far and currently. That makes Aditya L1 absolutely unique because we are going to measure remotely, in situ, and particles and fields. I was also mentioning about multi-direction and that is coming from the aspects payload which stands for Aditya Solar and Particle Experiments. And this is going to measure particles ranging from 100 EVs going to several MEVs, which is essential for us to know because when the CMEs are happening or the uh, sun is quite angry, the plasma which is coming out from the sun ranges from several EVs to several MEVs. And therefore, we should know in what direction the plasma is coming and whether the plasma is getting accelerated in between when it comes from sun towards earth and therefore, there is a multi-direction information which is available from the aspects payload because it consists of two sensors, Swiss and STEP, essentially giving you in two different energy bands. And therefore, we'll be able to quantify the CME, CIRs, and all the processes which is happening on the sun, which gives out coronal mass ejections. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your remarks. And now, finally, we move on to the principal scientist, Dr. Sankara Subramaniam. So how does, India, how does the Indian science community seek to capitalize on ISRO's space capabilities, especially these observatory missions like AstroSTAT and Aditya L1? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so now uh, ISRO has established that uh, it has a capability to uh, uh, send observatory class missions anywhere in the interplanetary medium. Um, ISRO also is developing capability for small satellite missions uh, uh, like a nanosat, uh, CubeSat, as well as the small satellite capability. And that is something which, uh, especially a heliophysics community, could utilize it because we can, at a low cost, we can launch many more such instruments which are essential for heliophysics uh, community here in India. So, so and also the big, bigger mission takes its own uh, uh, life cycle because it requires technologies to be developed for, uh, for a bigger missions. So in between these big missions, if we capitalize on these small uh, satellite missions, and that will uh, enhance the uh, um, uh, science capability of our country to the next uh, level. And uh, as you know, the science and technologies are always synergized. As the technology improves, your mm -hmm. science improves. Uh, when I started my career in solar physics, I started with a uh, photospheric magnetic field. Now we are in a position where we can do coronal magnetic field uh, with Aditya L1, which was not feasible when I was doing my PhD. So similarly, as we move on, and as the technology starts to improve, we would be able to generate much more uh, capable instruments, much more uh, compact instruments, which will enable us to do much more science what, than what we can currently do. So we look forward to capitalize on ISRO's capabilities, both at the large scale as well as, as, well as at the small scale uh, instruments, and also its capability for developing new technologies in the near future. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, sir. That was very interesting. And uh, to, uh, to end this, I have a last question to Dr. Dipankar Banerjee. And it's about like, what, out, uh, like, what kinds of outreach is possible through this launch to energize the scientific community? This is a very, very important question. And we are proud uh, to be Indian now after the Chandrayaan success. I think it's just not the students, it's the entire country is excited. And, uh, and we got this opportunity to now travel towards sun. So it is very important that the younger generation, you know, comes into the research and also utilizes the data. You know, uh, these uh, scientific missions are for the community and uh, it has to be the community driven. So we, some of our scientists, you know, who have been engaged with this mission for uh, decades, we understand uh, what is expected to be, uh, you know, this data. Uh, but the younger generation, they need to be trained. And uh, so for that reason, we also have a Aditya support cell at Nainital. 
and we are going around in the country. Uh, we are regularly conducting workshops. So through these workshops and training program, we really want to reach out to, to other you know, people who are particularly in the universities or IITs, because they have so far not been directly involved with the Aditya mission. So I think we are really, uh, you know, really going out, and we expect that the youngsters of the next generation will come and utilize this data, because the data is for the community. So unless you know, we have more users, you know, we will not be able to effectively utilize the data, scientific data which is coming, and the way we can help the community at large. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think it is very important for us also to reach out to schools and colleges because uh, the younger generation should be told about this kind of activities which is happening in the country. Chandyantri launch has galvanized the whole nation and everybody is interested to know what all is happening in the science and technology within the country. And therefore, this mission along with the Chandyantri mission, that is the Adhyat mission and Chandyantri mis uh, mission, is going to give us a lot of new information which is going to be very beneficial for the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you everybody for participating in this discussion.